Welcome back darlings. This week I've got a proper treat. This Porsche Boxster needs everything doing to it. We've got hood cleaning and recoloring and restoring. We've got scratch repair because someone keyed it. We've got machine polishing. We've got body work that's had more work on it than the share. Um, used the paint in this case to show you how different that is. Got crazy on the back. Nothing could really do about that. Um, full interior clean, condition of the leather seats. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's two days worth of work this one, so I reckon it's gonna be a, a, a long video. Anyway, I hope you sit back and enjoy it. Let me show you around, show you me touching in the paint and stuff while I go and get set up. So it's definitely one swirly bird and you can see here it's kind of consistent across the whole vehicle and the hood the hood was faded a bit dirty a bit and it had a little of uh, baked in lichen and maybe even bird droppings but first off i'm starting with the scratch now i want to remove as much as the previous um touch up that i possibly can but whilst leaving as much in the scratch as possible so i can just build up on top of that so i'm using acetone here on a cotton bud acetone is actually just nail varnish remover so that's what i'm using to get rid of this and after i've done that i'm going back into doing the touch up the paint i'm using was provided by the customer but i've added the bulking agent uh, which is the gloss enhancer and i'm using the brushes from the paint gear uk touch up set and it's absolutely brilliant so you get in that set you get a match color if you wanted it um, and you get uh, three sets of different uh, set of three different brushes and the gloss enhancer and uh, and a box to store it all in oh, and, and a brush cleaner as well it's really really good that was a week before I got to doing this so now I'm doing the polishing I've set up on the owner's driveway I've got the gazebo up uh, to give me a nice shaded area to work in and uh, yeah time to crack on so the last little inspection bits and we'll get into it So I've washed the wheels and I wetted the hood first because you're supposed to. I'm now applying the Renovo rag top cleaner um, and you have to put it on onto a wet top, let it soak in for 45 minutes to an hour before you come back and agitate it. So that's what I'm doing here. Left it for an hour while I went off and did other bits on the car like cleaning it and then uh, came back and I'll give it some agitation in a bit. So anything for the uh, heavily contaminated bits and also the tires this time I used Steiner Gloss Forced as the um, cleaning agent because it is really potent. The more I use it actually the more I really like that product. In case you were wondering, shampoo of choice today was Garage Therapy Decon Shampoo and the iron fallout removal that's going on right now is Corosol. So it's always really difficult to see like a, a reaction from the fallout remover on dark paint, but there's some big blobs of it here. So rather than being lots of small bits of fallout, there's some big chunks of it, which is a strange one. I've not seen that uh, before. Anyway, he's doing his work, so time for a blast off. Right, so we're on to the rag top hood cleaning bit now. Um, you can see I'm using the green drill brush because it's stiff, which is good. Not using it on the drill though, because that would be kind of too aggressive, but you can use it great in your hands as a fantastic scrub brush. And in fact, the kind of spline um, uh, is greatly located between your fingers, so you get a good grip over the thing. So uh, a good tip for you. 
Um, but the, I was finding there was a bit left as well, so I went with the Tough Shine tire brush there, obviously rinsed out from tire cleaning duties, um, to kind of get in, because it's got finer, uh, but still firm bristles, to get into the weave. Now, that looked like to me like it hadn't shifted enough, so I gave it another hit. This is another 45 minutes later. Um, so I've left that dwell and gone back to it again. You'll find a bit later I do it again and I use uh, Surfex HD then. But I'll talk to you a bit more about it when I get to it. So I'm starting off by uh, flatting back the um, touch-up repair that I've done to get it flush with the surface. Now I'm using 2000 grit um, flexi pad uh, discs, they're the denibbing discs from cleanyourcar.co.uk and I've got it on my SPTA uh, DA polisher, mini DA polisher. Works really really well, could have gone with 1500 grit but I'd uh, run out of those at this point so I went with the 2000s and it just took a bit longer but it gave me a nice controlled level of cut so I was pretty happy with the results. Right, so all the major sanding's been done now and I'm taking it back as far as I want to. It's still below the surface in places, but this is just an opportunity to make it look better than it was, not perfect. What I do need to do, though, is blend out the 2000-2500 sanding with a bit of 3000 into this area around here. Be careful, because this clearly had some paint on at some point. Anyway, just gonna go around and do that on both sides. I need to wash it again, because there's paint splatter everywhere. The hood needs doing again, the uh, second the third time it will be. I'm going to hit that with Surfex HD this time and see if that shifts it. And if it doesn't do it after this one, it will just be as good as it can be. There's a lot of lightning in there. Anyway, we'll see what we get to. So this is Surfex HD at 10%. Uh, and I gave it a kind of a scrub almost straight away, made the brush wet. It got a bit more out, but not an awful lot. So by that point, that was as clean as it could possibly be. I'm wiping it down now here, but I'm using a rinseless wash to do that quickly, so um, I don't have to go and wash the entire vehicle again. All the prep's done. We can now get on to polishing. But first, we should take some meter readings, right? See how thick the uh, paint is. So I've got my next diag here. Uh, I think this is the standard plus. Uh, I'm gonna do one from inside the door first, and then we can go around and see just how painted up this thing really is. There's definitely something on the rear wings and the rear boot and I think the front bumper as well. Let's see. All right, 90 to 110 microns inside the door. Now we're going to the actual door. Well, that's 230. Yeah, that's clearly been painted. That wing's clearly been done. That bonnet looks original and it was consistent all the way across, so that was. Front bumper has been repainted, but you can't get a reading off it because it's plastic. Rear wing had been done, which you can see in a minute. Uh, that was deep. That, to me, says there has been filler under the paint. And if you look, uh, I could see it. I couldn't capture it in the video, but there was clearly some shrinking of the filler underneath it as well. So you could be a crazing there. You can just about see it here. There's like a weird texture. I'm gonna put the light on, see if that shows it up to you. Um, there's, there's crazing, which is the uh, primary filler underneath the shrinking. We've got bubbling here. God, this is gonna be a, there's no, and, and I think there's pigtails as well. So we're doing well. I've gotta be really careful around on this bit. Let's have a look at meters though, meter readings. Yeah, 210, this is where the bad should be. 220. 180, the top of it didn't look like it got much paint. Where it has been painted, I'll bring the camera around so you can have to see in a second. The wing, rear wing, 190, that could be original. No, actually no, there's, um, no, definitely not. There's a micro blistering in that as well. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look around to the door. Right? I'll show you this other bit in the back here though first. So, all this blistering. Let's go make sure you can see what I can see. Right, we're gonna focus in camera. Try that. Right, those bits there, they're not coming out particularly well on the camera, but there's, you, you can see there's marks, and particularly uh, here. So we can there. 
Right. Those all picking up there. Those are blisters in the paint. And I really can't go near them with the polisher uh, unless it's just a very gently with a finishing compound. Although the problem is the boot is, this thing is absolutely knackered. I have to be really careful around the blistering. I might even put some tape near it so I just don't go near that area and then just do it with a little bit of a finishing compound at the end. But God, this is bad. Okay. Now, before we get into any of that, we need to take out the uh, sanding marks. So what I'm hitting it here is on the three inch pad, I've got Megs 105, which is their cutting compound and I've got the Shoal Concepts Purple Spider. It's a lovely little pad, works really well. And in fact, later on, I went through various different pad combinations, but I found the Purple Spider um, with S20 Black ultimately gave a fantastic finish. So I used the bigger one a lot later on, uh, but I went through the Roots Yellow and I went the Roots Yellow Wool and stuff like that, you know, to find a good combination that worked. Fifty fifty here on the rear wing. You can see that the right hand side is unpolished and the left hand side is polished. All right, let's see what we've got to then. This is um, this repainted boot with just one hit of S20 black. Um, six passes in the set. S20 black on a Roops yellow wall. This is probably probably as far as I'd want to take it, I think. So I think we'll see what the results are like. And as long as we haven't got tons of holograms, or marring. This will be what we go with on the boot, I think. So let's have a look. Okay. Let's have a look over here. That's how bad it was. Let's see how clear we've got. So a massive improvement. I can see some marring though, over here particularly. So what I think I'm going to do is I will do the rest of the boot with that configuration. And then I might have to come back with Oberoop's yellow pad, yeah, yellow foam, and some Megs, Megs 205 I reckon to clear it up. It's annoying, but it touches life. It's just one of those things. Yeah, it's not finishing down well this paint. I'm terribly tempted to go for some 205, but I don't think it's got enough cut. Tell you what, I've got the pad washer. I'll wash the pad out, I'll do this. Yeah, that side's got some really bad, really bad bits. I'll do it here. I'll do it, like I said, finish the whole thing and then come back and uh, give it again. I don't think I said at this point, but I'm using Shoal Concepts S20 Black on the Roots Yellow wall here.
Now it's MEGS 205 on a Roop's yellow foam. All right. So I'm kind of stopping for the day because uh, I need to I need to do a little bit more and need to put the uh, dye on the roof. That's as clean as it's going to get. You'll see that in a minute. Definitely not perfect, but it's definitely not it's not coming up any cleaner. So anyway, check this out. Ooh, look at that. And then of course over here. Nice. So in the end, Shoal S20 Black on the yellow wall, followed by um, Megs 205 on the yellow foam doing the magic there. Kind of hard to believe it was that bad to start with when you see it like that, isn't it? It's not crystal clear in terms of there's still bits in it, but they're deep, very, very deep. This isn't bad. But yeah, on to putting the dye onto the roof and then put the sides up in the casino and lock this thing away for the night. day later now so the first job of the next day was to get the mats washed and shampooed so they could be drying out in the sun and be ready to put in bone dry at the end of the day. So picking up where I left off last night on the polishing, this is Roop's Yellow Wall but with Megs 105 and then I'm going on to the uh, Shoal Concepts S20 Black with the Purple Spider. Uh, just to say, when you're using a 3 inch pad on the Das 6 Pro, it vibrates a lot and I know a lot of people have this problem with it. Because the counterbalance isn't set up for that size pads, it's set up for 5 or 6 inch pads. Now I'm wearing, I think it's Stanley, uh, I got them from Screwfix and I'll ping a link to you in a bit later, but um, they're Stanley anti-vibration gloves and they really work a treat. They really, really help. They stop my hands getting all tingly and uh, numb, so I recommend them. I'll put the link down below. Just to say, if you're enjoying the content and enjoy the channel, feel free to buy me a coffee, uh, the link's down below, and it helps um, keep me fueled up and uh, keep going for these details.
all that's left is this front bumper. But this front bumper is bad to the bone. Anyway, it's had a appalling paint job on. Uh, there's, well, it may not have been appalling at the time. It is possibly it's sunk now, so benefit the doubt there. Um, it's, you see it's really flat, really swirly, and there's scour marks over here. So unlike what I've done the rest of the car, apart from I've been taking out sanding, I'm gonna have to do cutting on this front bit and then refine it and just get it as good as we can. Got crazing here because it's uh, someone's nudged it a bit over here too. So I have to be careful. But um, on these big top bits here anyway, the most visible, I could go at it with Mex um, 105 on a Roots Yellow wool and then I'm gonna come back with the Shoal S20 Black and the um, Shoal Purple Spider, which I've been using pretty much everywhere else apart from when I was using the Roots Yellow Foam. I found that Purple Spider is actually behaving a bit better. So, we kind of do a 50-50. I focus on this bit and I'll just move this around afterwards so we can see. Go from here to here, see where we get to, and uh, come back and have a look. The uh, camera app crashed while I was doing that second pass with the uh, Shoal S20, but let's have a look. You'll be able to see the results, that's the main thing. So, there we go. Quite a good bit of clarity there versus this unholy mess. <laughs> so, it's bringing it back reasonably well. It's really soft paint, this. Really soft almost to the point so i'm using yeah i'm using the fen lab for instance to buff wipe it off i think i might even need to put some um some the qd in the wipe off towel because it's marring so this is really really soft but it explains why that etching is color so quick pro quo I, I might do it also with um I might switch back to the Roots Yellow and I might put the Mex 205 to finish on it because it's very soft. It's very, this is very different to all the other paint on here. A little bit of marring there, you can see, from the wipe off. They're not as bad as that. So. Well, it worked. That is the main thing. Um, I didn't need to switch to the 205 using the, um, sorry, the Meg 205, using the ONR as an additional bit of lubrication when wiping off has yielded the results. So I'm really pleased with that. All the polishing is done. So I'm gonna stick you back from afar. I need to do an IPA wipe down and then apply some Nova Luster. There's onto the interior. So the scuttle was really faded and I'm using Nanolex trim rejuvenator here. Um, I've got a video up there, put up in the corner there as a comparison between that and Auto Finesse Revive. 
Ideally, maybe Solution Finish would have been the best product, but yeah, I don't usually carry that with me, and I definitely need to buy some after seeing Matt at Obsidian Details uh, video recently on a Porsche scuttle, and he put it on, and it looked incredible. So that will be added to the arsenal. But I have to say, Nano Electric Chin Rejuvenator works very, very well. So after a good hoover, um, every single surface in here um, that was plastic or leather was treated to a good wipe down with Koch Chemi Polestar. Now, as I take down my gazebo at 30 times speed, I was on my knees by this point. But I wanted to say thank you very much for watching. I'm going to ping you some afters in, in a second. Uh, and I look forward to the next one. Let me know what you thought about this. Um, I know it's a long video, but was it worth it? Did you make it to the end? Uh, it's difficult to do the job justice. And you kind of see that in a lot of detailers' uh, videos. I see that there's some long form videos where you just cannot. Um, shorten this too much otherwise you lose the value in it I think but you're the people watching it so let me know what you think thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one